They say the best way to predict the future is to create it. But how can we do that when we don't know where to start? I like to picture my path to success as a car ride, like a really long one. It spans on and on as your road for life continues. But when do you get out? When do you get out of the car and see if you reached your destination? I have no idea where that is. I want to talk about the experiences in life that have brought me to where I am now, and the regrets and lessons I've learned from them. I want to explain my idea of my future as it is now. I want to tell upcoming sophomores to always value and hold on to your experiences. I've learned that they are the things that push you to succeed. Along the road of life, there are bound to be roadblocks. Problems that halt your journey and stop you from going any further. And the only way around these is by solving them. And now I was at one. What wisdom would I like to pass down to incoming sophomores as a graduating sophomore? What could I say? What can I tell these people that would have meaning to them? I can't tell people to reach for their dreams, well, because I didn't have any clear ones either. I didn't know what to say, so I had to do the one easiest thing I could do to clear my mind. Now to think. The time before COVID was just a time of living life as it was. I remember when I was born, I grew up unaware and uncaring of what was going to happen in the future. My childhood back then was just filled with games and joy. We were just learning to live bit by bit the world around us. But it made me purposely throw away my thoughts and dreams, solely because I was afraid. Afraid of what I would need to do to get these dreams real. My mind never expanded. I never wanted to get out of my comfort zone. I was never able to complete my definition of what my dream was. And I was aided by a should you know as COVID-19. Once COVID finally wore off, I was reintroduced to a world where I was unprepared for it. Or high school. This is where my regrets come in. I realized I restricted myself to the bubbles much smaller than what I was capable of. I didn't think about actually quickly losing my future. I just wanted to zoom past life. But with COVID gone, I saw the world much clearer. I felt smaller and smaller as people around me had stronger drives for success. It made me learn that my road for success would crumble if I didn't put any thoughts to it. And now, my road has grown further than before. I began experimenting with new things like computer science and badminton, and expanding my eyes to join volunteer groups and clubs. I want to keep going my road to reach my destination. But there is another thing I value so much, the people in my world. I was able to gather a lot of life lessons from my dad. Not the old whistle ones you hear from movies or whatever, but how to scoop the ice cream out when it's too frozen, how to give the best back massages. There were just little old tricks that made it easier in life. He never really had someone giving him advice either, because he had to dig out his tunnel with his own hands. My mom never gave really me much advice either. Instead, she guided me into the light where I can find it for myself and learn even more. I always feel assured that my mom's hand is there, guiding me through the little bits of life. I think that's how it's always been for our family. The little bits. Growing up with my family has always been the little things that have helped me the most. As time passes, the experiences I gain from them grow into lessons that I always hold on to. Morals and a sense of dignity that I follow as my rules of life. I am a forever grateful for them. But there's someone even more important to me. My brother Matthew. From the moment we were born, we were inseparable. We are identical. The same everything. Most of our relatives couldn't tell us apart either. Our experiences have always been connected because our minds have always been intertwined. Being raised as twins, we were able to learn new lessons of patience and selflessness. We learned to always be fair, and even so, I hated them at times. We fought. A lot. And many people were caught in the crossfire too, because there's always been a natural competition between us. We were always dashing against each other to see who was better. Whoever had the most awards, the best test scores, even who got more apple juice at the dinner table. This race always expanded everywhere. We didn't even know where the finish line was. <coughs> but these experiences drove me forward because without them, I wouldn't have had such a strong drive to keep growing. I learned how fortunate I was to have them in my life, not only as a brother, but as a companion and friend. The truth was that we both fueled each other's success. We had pushed each other forward on our paths, and without the other, we both would have fallen off. I learned how important it was to keep them by my side, and how much small things like these can sum up to change our lives. Our path is still growing today. We become less of Matthew and Eric, and more of ourselves. We dive deeper into the complexities of our lives as our paths turn to new directions. I want incoming sophomores to realize the importance of treasuring their experiences. I want them to salvage the little things that bring comfort and joy to your lives and hold on to them. Because I want them to realize that there will be times of objection too. You will have a considerable amount of fails and regrets. In truth, my regrets have lingered for a long time. When I dig back to my past, I can see fragments of joy and pride. But with that, memories of misery have also filled my mind. At some point, the road will get bumpy. You will encounter roadblocks denying you from reaching your destination. That's the reality of entering a new stage of the life. It's not pretty. There will be times in life when you reach a point of overwhelmingness, where it feels as if that your entire world is starting to collapse on you. I want to love life. I can be sad, but at the same time, I can feel really happy that something can make me feel that sad. It makes me feel human. The only way I could have ever felt this sad is that I felt really good before, so I realized I didn't take the bad with the good. Maybe just call it a beautiful sadness. My failures always come back to haunt me. They make me feel angry and bitter, and you know, 
I recognize that there's not much you can do to change the past. So that's why I've just learned to use memories as more fuel. Because staying optimistic rather than pessimistic will ultimately change the drive of your life. Use failures to feed your success with success. Even if you find yourself in a pit of self-doubt and misery, you won't see the light unless you climb out. I think my plan for the future is pretty simple now. I want to see myself in a definition of success that I've created for myself. I want to keep cultivating that definition just as far as my journey goes. Neither of my parents have made it further than high school, so I want to be a pioneer in my own path with their hands of support. Wherever I go, I want to be at a place of success. I'm trying to get a job over the summer and find new interests like cooking and working out. The vision I have is still way too burdened for me to make it clear, so instead, I'd rather set no limits to my success I've attained and see where the road takes me from there. My final reflection is this. All the experiences in your life come together to form what makes you. I know my life isn't that interesting. It may be boring to some of you, but it's my own path that I will continue to cultivate for myself. And it's up to me to choose which choices influence my path. I want experiences to mean more numerous things. Success, joy, failure, sadness, love. But regardless of what your experiences are, you should use them as more fuel to continue forward on the road. Keep the people you cherish next to you because only they can provide you with more support for success. Even this project is just an experience for me. It's just another tank of fuel that will propel me further down the road. The end of my school year is closing in fast. I may not know what my dreams are, but I still have the time and people to help me out. The final destination is unknown to most people. Although you may not know where it is now, it's on the palm of your hand to keep pushing forward and find where it is. I've been driving to this place all my life, since the very moment I was born. So for all I know, I'm just going to keep on driving until I am there.